The Abia state government is accusing herders of kidnapping citizens of the state while warning that it would ensure punitive measures against any attacker arrested. Commissioner for Information John Oki Kalu says the state government also condemned the destruction of farmlands by open cattle grazing. He says Governor Okezie Ikbazu has directed security operatives to investigate the destruction of farmlands and cases of kidnapping in Abia, North Senatorial District. He's asking residents to go about their daily activities as, as the administration is responding to the situation. All right. Uh... We have the Commissioner of Abia State, uh, Carlo, uh, to join us on the Herders of Farmers Clashes in Commissioner for Information Abia State and the Herders of Farmers Clashes in Abia State. Glad to have you join us, Carlo. Thank you very much for having me. Good. L let's start it this way. Let's start with the fact that uh, you have to confirm this, that the Governor, okay, Zee Bazo, uh, it says the government pays herders 100,000 naira for each cow killed as a result of clashes between them and the farmers. Uh, is that true? And what's the basis for that? As part of our conflict resolution mechanism, we established a conflict resolution team in all the local government areas of Abia State uh, to deal with issues... Uh, around uh, farmers and herders' conflict. And we agree that um, where necessary, if uh, cows are killed by uh, farmers uh, wrongly, we will compensate the herders. And then where these herders destroy farmlands, we will compensate the farmers. And in, in some cases, uh, for us to bring down the temperature and keep the peace, we've had to pay both farmers and herders. So, yes, I can confirm that the governor said that. Okay. Um, just to add to that then, um, how is that particular means of uh, conflict resolution going on? Uh, how, how, how much gains are you getting from that? And then to tag on to that, why do we seem to see IPOB uh, issuing ultimatums and, and seemingly doing so unchecked? Well, um, let me start by saying that... Uh, so far, before now, we've been enjoying relative peace. The mechanism worked to bring peace between herders and farmers. But uh, in recent uh, weeks, we've um, noticed some elements that may not be the normal header getting into the fray when you have somebody kidnapping citizens around particular areas, you have, and, and, and security agencies are pointing to um headers being responsible we believe that uh, these uh, armed headers that uh, they are not like the normal headers and uh, we think that uh, we should change gear in dealing with them because criminality should be dealt with as criminality so before now the mechanism was working very well and uh, we had relative peace but now we are going to go after criminal headers those who are kidnapping avians those who are deliberately destroying farmlands, we are going to go after them to ensure that um, we have a peace. He is free to say whatever he is saying. But as a government, we are responsible for the security of life and properties of over 5 million Abians, and we will continue to do whatever is necessary to protect the people of Abia State. But it's even worrisome that IPOB it shouldn't be talked about because IPOB actually has been proscribed. It's not supposed to be in existence. So one wonders why the IPOB and the ESN are still in, in Abia State making statements, what the government is doing about that. But that's all. I, 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 do, not believe, I do not believe that IPOB issued a statement from Abia State. No, 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 they didn't. I didn't say they did. Outside Abia State. And if oh, okay. he has access to the internet and he okay. wants to release the statement, so okay. it, is. it is left for the federal government that proscribed IPOB to manage such things. All I right. mean, this falls within international relations stream. But right. I can assure you that uh, we have uh, no IPOB activities confirmed within Abia State, and uh, security agents are on top of uh, the game. All right. All right, John. Uh... The state government on Tuesday accused herders of kidnapping citizens of the state and of destroying farmlands with cows grazing openly. Yeah, this is your word against theirs. I mean the accusation because they're not here to defend themselves. But then 
there is a law against open grazing. If this holds true, why is, is this still happening? The information we have came from uh, security agencies in the state and, of course, from relevant communities who gave uh, the government direct information on what their experience is like, particularly around the Sukwatazis. Yes, there are laws. Indeed, even without our uh, state's uh, anti-open grazing law that was enacted in 2018, there are other laws in this country against willful destruction of uh, properties. It is not for us to enforce. It is for the police. And the police is a federal agency. They should enforce the laws as they exist, as they have always been. If you kidnap somebody... It's a crime before. And you should be tried as appropriate. That as a responsible state government, we endorsed. The governor signed the anti-grazing, uh, anti-open grazing law that was enacted by the State House of Assembly. It, it is uh, the police and other security agencies that should enforce. And these agencies uh, are federal agencies. And we are calling on the federal government to do the needful. Okay. C Commissioner, um, forgive me if I seem to be harping on, as it were, about um, keeping the temperature down, but I, I imagine you understand that nationally the temperatures are going up regarding these clashes. What kind of conversations are you having with the herdsmen, the legal ones, about, you know, respecting, uh, in terms of peaceful negotiations, what kind of peaceful negotiations are being had at the current time? Yes, you are correct, and um, we are determined to make sure that uh, the temperatures are brought down as quickly as possible. As, yet, as at yesterday, the uh, legal headers, so to speak, the normal headers, and uh, farmers in Bend, the local government, and the Sukwato local government, uh, and indeed in the Chico local government areas of the state, they had meetings uh, supervised by security agents that uh, were also there, and they are talking to each other. See, I don't believe that uh, uh, these normal headers uh, will normally have problem or major crisis with farmers. But there appears to be the movement of uh, a murderous group that may have come into the southern part of Nigeria from wherever. And this murderous group is responsible for the kidnapping and uh, willful destruction of large farmlands. If you see what our people are going through in the hands of these people that destroy these farms, it, it is uh, painful. So yes, conversations are going on, and uh, we believe that uh, the situation is under control right now, and we will not rest until we ensure that uh, there is total peace in Abia states. All right, uh, Commissioner, we're going to keep you on pause. Uh, when we return from this break, we will continue with you. You're still watching News Today here on Arise News. We'll be back in a bit. Come on, stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Newsday, and we're having a conversation with Commissioner for Information, John Kalu, before we went on the break. Commissioner, I hope you're still with us. Okay. Yes, I am. Okay, good to, good to have you still with us. So I just want to take up from something you said before we went on the break. You mentioned a murderous group by your profiling that seem to have come in in recent times. Is there any co collaboration going on with other states, maybe in the south, uh, south? West, perhaps, or even from the federal level, to have some kind of collaboration to try and trace the origins of this group? Yes, uh, the governors of the South is they are meeting regularly on that. And they did. We are working with uh, federal agencies, uh, including the security agencies in our state. And um, the, if you listen to the governor this morning, you will understand he gave the correct diagnosis of uh, the origin of these problems. And the fact that if we don't take necessary measures, these groups might metamorphose into uh, some form of uh, Boko Haram or ISIS-supported uh, uh, group in the state. And uh, we are determined to make sure that we root them out as quickly as possible. We are not going to have it in this state with bandits and terrorists. It's not going to happen. All right. A very strong statement there, uh, Commissioner. Talk to us. This sounds quite interesting. The Farmer Heather Conflict Resolution Committee from the state, uh, I think the CP, Commissioner of Police in the state, is, is the chairman, if I'm correct. So talk to us about it. Um, who, who and who are involved? Uh, how long 
uh, how, how it's worked, you know, to try to settle. I, I didn't get that. The, the, the Herders Farmers Committee. I hear that there's a Herders Farmers Committee, uh, Conflict Resolution Committee uh, formed by the state governor. Talk to us about it. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I, I, I think it's been largely very successful. Uh, it was one of the innovations of Governor Kezi Kwazo uh, because he's a man who wants to seek peace at all time, use peaceful means to solve all problems, and the way that becomes impossible, do the need for. We were able to form that committee sometime in 2015 to stave off uh, this uh, crisis that would normally come from... Uh, the engagement of farmers and herders. It is the government's own way of, uh, you know, being in the middle to settle as they reflect when you have a conflict uh, between one group and another, even in a football match. So what we do is, if reports come, the committee will look into it. Like you rightly pointed, that committee is led at the state level by the state commissioner of police, and at the local government level by the relevant uh, divisional police officers. And then the team will come together we are along with uh, the political and religious the economic leaders of the area to decide on what needs to be done to settle the conflict in terms of compensation and also make recommendations on how to prevent future conflicts. It's worked for us. Uh, in my local government in Ohasia, we used to have multiple clashes uh, before now. But today, the situation is uh, quite stable. And in other neighboring local governments, so the uh, Conflict uh, Resolution Committee worked for us in Abia State up to this moment. But what we are seeing right now is what we believe uh, will not be, I mean, you can't bring an armed man into a negotiation or a discussion table, particularly when that armed man is bent on uh, kidnapping and harming your people. So for that particular group, the group we call the criminal herdsmen, not the normal herdsmen moving the cattle uh, to the point of sales. Those that are armed and those that are destroyed, like kidnapping people and in some instances raping women, we will not cohabit with them in Abia State. The security agents have been um, primed and prepared. The governor in response to the disruptions in the security architecture of our state, gave out 25 vehicles in December to security agencies uh, in the state, uh, rebuilt police stations that were destroyed, ensured that uh, he constructed a brand new Zone 9 police headquarters for seamless coordination. And uh, today we think that uh, with the Homeland Security team also at work, that we have that uh, security architecture so the, uh, actually up to 98% restored. And uh, we will deploy fully. Indeed, we have deployed fully uh, to solve the challenge that we have in Abia North. Okay, it's impressive to hear what you're saying. But I just want to take you back to something uh, the governor of Abia State said. And uh, I'm reading from an article in a newspaper where he says that um, we're not, the federal government is not tackling the root cause of the problem. And he's recommending that Nigeria is not diagnosing the problem properly. Uh, the problems we face in this country are existential. So what can you say to that? What does he mean by existential? And what is the root cause of the problem? Well, you see, there are certain things we've done in the past that brought us to where we are. As a nation, there were things we ignored before now that we should have tackled. And those things are coming together right now. And that is what is leading to the tension in the country you need to solve the problem of inter-ethnic tension. Solving it, you need to eliminate the causative uh, agents. For instance, if you see these young people, you know, shouting and screaming about IPOB, more often than not, it is because they see nepotism in the system. They see that uh, their voices are not being heard, the elders are not being heard. Because when they complain to the elders in the past and we say to the center, please listen to us. Let us have federal character in operation in every form of it, including in terms of delivery of capital projects. I mean, I saw a report not long ago indicating that uh, uh, less than 30% uh, 
uh, less than 25% of the capital projects done in the past uh, eight years uh, came to the southeast, south, south area. And now, when you have the accumulation of the frustration of these young people who now feel that their voices can no longer be heard, they take uh, matters uh, into their own hands and begin to do certain things. See, there are fundamental flaws in our structure. The governor is talking about sitting down as a nation, looking at the structural challenges that we have as a country, correcting from the base. When you correct that uh, structural challenge, you will not have certain problems. Those who are today being called uh, uh, criminal headsmen may have been elements that escaped from the amnesty program in the north. They may have been elements that came into this country legally. Sometimes they're not even Nigerians. They might be from outside the country. Can we look at everything concerning the structure of this country and begin to make adjustments that will ensure that our children continue to live together in peace and harmony? Because if we keep peppering these things, and today we are jumping into one symptom that we have seen, instead of going to the root cause of the problem, we will live the rest of our lives solving small, small problems, putting out small, small fires, whereas the source of the fire remains there. And that's what the governor spoke about. Thank you for clarifying All right, that. Let me just drop this, if we have the time. Uh, quickly, uh, how are you dealing with the issue of stigmatization? You talked about criminal herdsmen and the people who are going about their duties normally. There is a very huge or big danger of trying to box everybody together and say they are just criminals. It is an idea to stigmatize the whole people on the basis of the crimes committed by certain individuals. When you commit a crime, you are responsible. Now, when we talk about criminal harassment, we are talking about Sorry, criminal Commissioner, I'm going to have to butt in there. You won't have time to elaborate on that point, unfortunately. Thank you for giving us your time on Newsday.